it all starts because of caribou caribou an artist on um Lil yeti's concrete boys record label recently left this lady here on the left hand side she's a pretty good rapper i quite like her she's featured on the latest album which i think i forgot what it's called is it i think it's called is it called it's us the latest album they put out a compilation it's really fucking good um but she was featured quite heavily on that tape she fucking killed it but lately she kind of has distanced herself from the crew and the collective yeah it's called this us volume one and she's on her own now and little yeah he didn't really speak about it he kind of ignored it he didn't really speak about it but she left concrete boys she's no longer concrete boys then he did speak about it and he spoke about it and i think in a very grown way he didn't sully her name he basically took the high road he was very mature about it and said look it didn't work out i wish i were the best and that was basically it then out of the blue an internet uh sorry an interview with key glock drops right so they interviewed key glock um what you call it um what's his name young dolph's boy um r.i.p young but dolph and during the interview with key glock this situation arises let me play it for you so you can see what i mean I think this is pretty wild. I'm not going to lie. So there's an interview with Key Glock and this situation arises that sends everybody in a tizzy. So let's go back to 2015. We was at my mama's house, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you start, when we've all had friends like this, right? And usually you only have one or two during your lifetime and you know to stay away from them. But those type of people like that who go out of their way to mention stuff like this in front of company, we was at my mama's house. It's like, bro, do you really need to bait me up like this? Do you really need to bait on my position like this? Really? Is this necessary to get your point across? Do you really need to bait me up like this? Really? I'm in my mama's house. Now, I mean, she's like two or three years older than me. That's another diss, by the way. Two or three years older than me almost sounds like, yeah, you should be up. You should be more up than I am because you've had two years more on the planet. But hey, let's continue. All right, now Mitch came to me and- Mitch came to me. <laughs> for many years. <laughs> He's been begging me for money for years. You didn't just start making beats, by the way. You've been making beats since, who knows how long you've been making beats. So he was making beats forever. They weren't going anywhere until he told me about them. I put a batter in his back. I showed him the ways. I opened doors for him. Now he's thriving for a very long time all right and <sighs> even key glock look at key glock's face look at key glock's face he's like yo look at key glock's face <laughs> he's like yo how you doing your man's like this that's how you know you're being a cunt when the person you're trying to impress is feeling bad for your friend that's when you know you're being a cunt you're trying to stun on your friend but the person that you're doing it in front of isn't impressed and is actually disgusted and confused. What the fuck is going on? What have I walked into? Up until... How long have we been doing this? Okay, so up until about maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. You were relevant? What, what, you spent a lot of time trying to find your steps. Right. Right. <sighs> God, little Yatty. Oh my God, little Yatty. Oh my God, little boat. What are you doing, brother? Fucking hell. Look at Mitch's face. Up until a cup, like, okay. But so that's, that's my making... point. No, 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 no. Imagine barking down your friend, also a good sign that you're close. Imagine if you didn't have a friend who's already extremely successful to help you get on your feet <laughs> i'm not gonna lie because i'm an agent of chaos because i'm a lover of the chaos realm a part of me loves this because this is little yatty's true self this is not his shadow self this is his true self coming through he's always felt like this he's always had these type of feelings always he's always maybe secretly had contempt for his friends just sucking off his teeth enjoying the laps enjoying all the luxuries of his success and he's thinking to himself without me where the fuck would you guys be he sat there laughing drinking tequila smoking drinking lean giggling away at them in the back of his head he's thinking to himself 
where the fuck would you guys be if I wasn't around? You're just looking at them, eating up all his food, using up all his electricity, sleeping on his couches, borrowing his clothes, thinking, if I wasn't around, where would you guys be? That's his true self coming out there. Fucking hell, little yay. A lot of people don't have that. So what I'm saying is, how, what do you say? Because you didn't want to get a job. I never even suggested you get a job because I knew. <laughs> oh my god oh my god when you have friends like yoti when you have friends like yati with a batty oh he doesn't have a bat he's quite quite, quite a flat bum actually considering he's black but if you when you've got a friend like yoti why do you need enemies and yes Exactly, Uche. I'm Uche. I'm as heartbroken as you, Uche. I love Little Yay. I love him. Artistry wise, style wise, art direction wise, usually in interviews wise, he seems really cool. He seems really chill, really level headed. And the fact that he's come he's come back from like, you know, being a bit of a meme and essentially built himself into being a legitimate artist, well rounded from making, you know, what do you call it? I say prog rock, synth pop, disco, indie dance, um, hip hop, R and B, writing for female rappers, videos on fucking looking crazy, like creating three different crews. I think he's kind of been through. Like I love Lil Yeah, he's a an amazing artist, like with a capital A. So this is, is really heartbreaking for me. I'm not gonna lie, and I actually really love their relationship, Yeah and Mitch especially when you're watching the podcast early on because it was quite nice because you get to see your ear around somebody because it's always nice to think especially on a pod i feel that's why joe budden's podcast worked well um for those of you i don't know i think joe budden's podcast early success was because joe was really unlikable people didn't like joe budden they didn't like him from loving hip-hop they didn't like him on social media he just came across like a very unlikable person but the podcast because he's doing it with his friends it kind of humanized joe and everyone started to see oh shit this is what joe's actually like you know quote unquote behind the scenes amongst his real friends when he's comfortable he's not that much of a cunt he's actually funny he's actually this he's actually that so i think with yo he did the same thing it almost humanized him and made him into like a i don't know i think it just made him more likable i think in the past year so i've actually do enjoy the show so it is really sad to hear what he's saying because this is more of a reflection of what the actual relationship is like fuck you knew you wouldn't get a job so what do you say to a who like, hey, I see a with a shiny watch. I got a gun, a dusty gun. It's gonna take a shiny watch. You know what I'm saying? What do you tell it? I wouldn't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna encourage it. But you gotta think about people got I, family. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So he's comparing his friend, not wanting to get a job and maybe work something out while he's his friend with his little yatty, who happens to be a very popular hip hop artist and shit and star. He's comparing that. To somebody not willing to, he's comparing it to that to understanding why a stick up boy would be a stick up boy. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. If I was Mitch, I might be more offended at this fucking analogy than what he said previously. I'm not gonna lie. I might be more offended at this analogy that he's trying to describe you as some as some thief. Like what? <sighs> you as is shit you can tell. Him, what? Like even what? if, even if, but what I'm you, telling you, think about yourself, but listen, though. But no, no, listen, no, even if, think about yourself, though, <laughs> think about yourself, though, then say it, that's what I, that's the point I'm trying to make to you. Yeah, big up, Koila, this is the conversation friends have after one finish the gear and acts too comfortable, exactly, 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 or sometimes, this is a conversation that happens at the afters, when everyone's kind of leaving. And you didn't want to say it when the when company's around, but now you're getting off your chest. But they're saying this during an interview with an artist. Look at Kegelok just sitting there. Super uncomfortable. Hey, bro. What point? Even if then, if I wasn't doing shit righteous then, older now. So I would not tell him to do yeah, anything you, like I was doing back yeah, then, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's fine, but you, that's because you've been through, you've been through years of, of, of development. Bro, that's the point of it. So I can... Oh, I thought he was about to say, I thought he was about to say, you've been through years of being bummy, of having to rely on me for money. I thought he was going to say something like that. I thought he was going to say something like that. You, you've been through years of what, of, of holding out your hand to me. Wait, so I'm saying, that's the you, point. But think about, remove me from this situation. Remove me. I was never in your life. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he's acting like a baddie. Yeah, he's out here acting like a baddie, you know. This is pure baddie energy. Remove me out of your life. Imagine I wasn't in your life. Where would you be right now? Yo, yeah, he's got real zesty, sassy, bad bitch energy, isn't it? Fucking hell. What the f would you have been doing? Who I feel like you might have been doing that shit. Who knows what you would have been doing if you ain't Wow. Wow. You ain't shit without me. You ain't shit without me. You ain't shit without me. If I wasn't around, you'd be fucked. If if you ain't have a to show you uh, yeah, what, about, uh, uh, thing, right what are you saying, bro? I'm saying that what you're saying is not. It's not. If you didn't have a nigga to show you, you're not. You're not. Like it's not true. You wouldn't tell him, hey man, just go get a job, man. No, I ain't saying. I ain't saying no. That's not what I said. I ain't so saying I would tell. <sighs> so you see, that was the first clip that everyone saw, and everyone realized that Yati is like a terrible friend. Obviously, um, that's obviously clear to see as day. But then another clip came out which was even worse. This clip might be even worse. This clip on God might be worse. And unfortunately, for those of you that don't like to cringe, this is gonna be a very cringe worthy Not clip like that I'm gonna play the whole way through. And it features Sweetie. So you're thinking, oh, at least Lil Yeah, he's not doing that in front of girls and company. Well, hold your horses. This is how, you, this, is an, this is from previously, a previous episode with Sweetie. Look at how he spoke to Mitch in the company of Sweetie. Like, uh, not like we both got money and I just like so happen to have money right now. I mean, like someone who don't have money at all. What? what, what not... Have I ever dated somebody who didn't God have damn no it. money? I ain't even talking to you. I'm saying at all kind of crazy. Like you mean like average job, like yeah, zero like dollars? A, oh. Obviously not like a homeless man, but like a man like you not. See, sweetie, do you see, sweetie, li literally like, like get uncomfortable in her seat. Sweetie, literally like convulsed. She twitched in her chair. She was so uncomfortable. Look at her face. Look at Sweetie's face. Look at Sweetie's face. She said, I'm not talking to you, motherfucker. Look at her face. <laughs> Look at Sweetie's face. <laughs> She's like, whoa. <laughs> so anyway, all that being said, um, that original clip that I showed you went viral. Everyone saw that Yatty's a shitty friend. And I guess Yatty was annoyed with the narrative online because everyone was retweeting that clip oh my god yeah he's a shitty friend if you have a friend like yeah why do you need an enemy blah 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 so yeah he eventually saw all those tweets and just had enough and decided to get on instagram live and go rant and just basically expose everybody he exposed everybody he exposed that caribou's freestyle on the radar bro which is really upsetting me he exposed that that caribou freestyle was written by him he he just he leaked the entire reference track where he's just rapping the whole thing I was like, oh my God. So anyway, let's play the clip. This is recently, just a few hours ago, let Yatty on Instagram Live exposing everybody and basically canceling the podcast now because everyone on Twitter is calling him out. Oh Say, so, hey, look. Sick as hell, fucking throwing up and shit. Fuck all that. I'm so sick and tired of helping people, bro. Look. I'm so I'm so sick and tired of helping people. That already is the first part where you know their little yacht is in trouble and he's corrupted and he's let the fame and the money get to him. In my opinion, I think if you've been blessed, if you've been put in a situation where you're able to make the money that little yacht is making and you're as famous as he is, you're as well regarded as he is, it's almost like an obligation. It's almost like a duty to use that fund, to use those monies, to use that fame, to use that attention to help those around you because if not what's the point of it all if you're just gonna hoard it all for yourself and just do everything by yourself for yourself on your own what's the point of having it human beings are social creatures we need people around us we need friends family whatever it may be so if you're able to help those around you to go and achieve their dreams and you know make their dreams come true and then they're able to then make other people's dreams come true it becomes like a trickle it becomes like a trickle down effect you help one person they can then help another person as well or they might even start on a family and that's fucking amazing also so i think already from the minute one you already see where yeah his brain unfortunately is a bit broken um maybe it's because of past experiences but oh. I'm so sick and tired of helping people, bro. All I done ever did was help people, nigga. From goddamn, this whole care shit to this Mitch situation online, what y'all talking about some? Uh, Lil Yachty disrespecting his friend. I'm gonna start with care, right?
So he's starting with Caribou. So now he's going at Caribou. Let's see what it says about Caribou. Cause right now I'm on some fuck everybody type shit. Yeah. Nigga fucking with me. Uh nigga, all I ever did was help care, nigga care. If you wanna tell this shit, tell the whole story. Go ahead, tell people how you verbally abuse people. Alright? Don't get on here and make it seem like niggas kicked you out. Like niggas kicked you out cause uh bullying you? Bro, go ahead and tell people how you talk to people. How you tell my security guy, oh you home oh, you work for me. Oh, uh, we are uh we you ain't got no you're poor and uh we above you and how you, you talk to people like they nothing. That's that's understandable complaint. If that's true, Caribou does sound like an awful person behind the scenes. She did seem a little bit, you know, cunty online, so it's not surprised. But I think as a leader, if you're the person that's running the label, if you're the person that's running the fucking collective, you should probably be able to nip that shit in the bud behind the scenes. You should be able to get some semblance, also have control, but like, like of order, of decorum, you know, of how people act and conduct themselves in business, especially within your presence. If she wants to go and do what she wants to do in her own time, cool. But you should be able to rein it in. It's obviously says it's obviously a bad image for Caribou, but it also doesn't sit right it doesn't make Yeti look great either that he wasn't able to kind of rein her in to be honest and now he's airing out her business it doesn't make you look good as a leader to be honest even though she sounds like a stinky person you should have reined her in and you should have kept it to yourself you talk to people like they're like they small like they like they beneath you and to be fair there's a little bit of hypocrisy here because he's talking about caribou talking to his security and everyone around them like they're peons but he also talks to Mitch like a piece of shit in front of guests. So where did Caribou learn that thing from? Where did she learn that it was okay to talk to people that work for or work under Little Yatty that way? Maybe she saw it. Maybe she saw how Yatty talks to Mitch, and she thought, "Yeah, we can talk to each other that way." Bro, bro, hold on. tell people, tell people how, tell people how you verbally abuse people. How you told me you're going to spit on me when you see me. Tell people how you talk to people, bro. The spit on me when you see me part of conversation, because I'm, I'm almost certain he's not being completely honest. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, most likely they had some sort of sexual relationship anyway. That's what people say. The rumor is that Caribou and Yatio are fucking. If that's the case, then you're already fucked up. As a leader, you shouldn't, you shouldn't fucking, you know, shit where you eat or eat where you shit either way. So he probably fucked the dynamic already of the group and of their relationship because he fucked her, allegedly. If that's the case, it's hard then to be honest with her or to be hard on her because, you know, you have a sexual relationship. So you already fucked up that dynamic. So the spit on me thing probably comes from a place of like, yeah, she feels too comfortable. How you, how, how you, how you, your brain is clinically imbalanced, bro. How you disrespect people. Your brain is clinically imbalanced. Is he talking about her having depression or something? Or having some sort of mental health issues? That's not cool. That's not cool. If he's disclosing the fact that she might have some mental health issues that she's dealing with privately that no one else knows about and he's now baiting it up by saying she's got a chemical imbalance in her brain or if he's just saying as a diss, that is not cool. How you, how you go around treating people in your everyday life I've been letting you do this whole thing where you act like you like a princess and you sweet and you know like oh you just such a good girl bro stop the front bro I don't think it's a I don't think it's a crime to be a bitch behind the scenes but to present yourself as a nice person in front of the camera as long as the music is good and you're turning up and doing your job that's what should matter to be honest I think him trying to like assassinate her character this way is a bit lame Unless it's this impact the work. If it impacted the work, fair enough. But you're allowed to like have two faces and have you know cut yourself in a different way. It might not be pleased. It might not be a pleasurable experience for those people around you. But it's not a crime to do so. We didn't internally. We have withheld your actions since the beginning of me giving you this career. Giving you a career. Fucking hell, yeah. What are we talking about, bro? What the fuck are we? What, yo, what the fuck are we even talking about, bro? <laughs> His voice is so funny. He can't even scream properly. <laughs> it doesn't even sound threatening when he screams. Bless him. You don't even do nothing. 
You was, what the fuck? Yo, bro, it's so crazy to me, bro, because I fucking, I, I, I've given you a career. And time to time, you just disrespect me. I wrote every fucking verse you've done. You see, this is where you don't need to do this sort of thing. He's already getting geeked up and amped up, but you don't need to say stuff like this. I work, I wrote every verse you've done. I, I dressed you. I dressed all five of y'all niggas, bro. What did the rest of Concrete do? You see what I mean about people like Yoi? This is why you have to be careful. And I've said it before in the stream chat. I think I've said it to you guys before. And I guess because I'm not the best person to judge this because I'm very private and I keep myself to myself. But I've seen my friends and I remember one particular group of friends. They know who they are. They had a really crazy falling out because they just got too comfortable borrowing shit from each other. And unfortunately, the person that had the most things, the guy that was quote unquote the richer, who had the nicer things, he then started to use that as a thing to hold over the other guy's head. And they had a very big and brutal falling out. Like it was a thing that was talked about in our circle for a while. I think even to this day, they still don't talk. And it's something that happened when we were like 16, 17. So be careful. And I've said it before plenty of times on the stream. No matter how down bad you are, I, I implore you, whoever's out there listening to me, no matter how down bad you are, and I've been down bad. We've all been down bad, you know? Fucking ketchup and bread sandwiches and shit. Drinking tea all day. Pasta every fucking day. We've all been down bad. No matter how damn bad you are, please think twice about who you ask for money or who you ask for help. Think twice. You can be super desperate. You're thinking, oh my God, I just need this. I just need this to hold me over. Just hold, just tighten your belt. Tighten your belt a little bit. Tighten your belt a little bit. Because sometimes when you're really damn bad and you ask somebody who's a piece of shit for, to help, because you're so damn bad, you don't realize they're a piece of shit. They're going to hold that one occasion, that one time that you were damn bad and you asked for their help. They're going to hold it over your head. And it might irreversibly, irrevocably change your relationship with that person forever. Be very careful who you ask money for because there's some people out there, especially someone like Yoti. This is different because he's like super rich. You shouldn't be like this. But you have to be careful. If you ask them for help, they, they might fuck you later. <laughs> They'll give it to you, but they're gonna fuck you later. Bro, I dress five niggas every time. We and by the way, this is really unfair too, because he's talking about caribou. This is super unfair. He's talking about caribou, and now he's dissing Concrete Boys and just telling everybody that he dresses the whole crew. They're like a boy band, and he's fucking Simon Cowell. This is really bad, really bad. If you got a problem with caribou, stick with caribou. If you got a problem with Mitch, stick with Mitch. Like every beef has to be dealt with directly don't then try and group everybody together you're all cunts you're all bums you're all broke you all don't have money i pay all your bills it's like bro <laughs> stepped out the house i put an outfit on everybody i put eight yo hey yo hey yo uche say it louder uche say it fucking louder money related resentments are something fierce exactly even worse with boys, bro. Even worse with boys. That ego, that male pride. Yo. So whoever you are out there and you're hearing my voice, if you're down bad, I know it's hard. I know it's tough. But I swear to God, tighten your belt. Be careful who you ask money for or help from. Because some motherfuckers, no matter how well-intentioned they are, they might use that shit against you. And when they do, you're going to wish you never asked them for money. You're going to wish you never did carry earrings in everybody ear i put three chains on all your neck we yeah but you're the label yeah you're the label that's what you're meant to do that's what labels do they give you an advance to appear like you're lit they give you an advance they put you in good clothes they give you they give you money so you can do all that shit why is he now why is he now holding that shit over their head I'm sure those those guys didn't ask for the diamond earrings. You gave it to them because you want them to look lit. They looked lit. You guys were popping. Come on, little yatty man. This is lame. This is so lame. About a Cartier watch. I gave you that Chrome Rolex, bro. You the most dis you what you was watching tables. Oh my God, yatty. That's why you're here, bro. That's why you've been blessed to be who you are. You've been blessed to be who you are so you can take somebody who was washing tables and give them a career, give them a chance to fucking fulfill their dreams. That's your purpose. You've made it. Not everybody gets to make it on his level. 
he's like rich rich like he writes stuff and he's an artist he's had fucking placements sprite commercials like he's super loaded for a young kid he's fucking killed it but the reason why you get that opportunity and get that sort of money so you can put your friends on why wouldn't you want to help out your friend who's working at fucking popeyes that's the sick that's always should be the dream oh yeah i got my boy who's working some shitty full-time job come here man you could be my fucking i don't know you could be my assistant i'll just put you on salary boom that's what you're meant to be doing <laughs> you, you don't then hold it over the person's head oh you have to be awake i bet he does that to his friends i bet he makes them drive them to prison to drive them to, to, to the fucking studio you have to drive me to studio what how can you not drive me to studio wake up man if it wasn't for me you'd be working nine to five it's like i'm sleeping <laughs> you was you was you was you was waiting what are we talking about nigga i changed your motherfucking life and you on here lying, talking about some we bully you? That shit got me fucked up, bro. You got me fucked up, bro. You're meant to take the high road, brother. You're, you're a leader. This happens all the time. Every artist that gets fucked over by their label always blames their label for fucking them over. But every artist signs a contract that tells them they're going to get fucked. Labels take the hit. All labels know that artists are lying. Most artists lie about their deals anyway. They want to always appear that they're in control, that they, that they have business acumen. Da, 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 da. They always want to appear like that. But most artists lie. Most artists will take a shitty 360 deal, take the advance, and then complain later. But uh, but labels don't come out and bait everybody up with their business. They just take the hit. That's what you're meant to do as a label, as an artist. You're meant to just take the hit. Okay, cool. Caribou's out there besmirching my name, sullying my name. I'm going to take the hit. It is what it is. Just take the high road. That's what happens when you're a label. You can't be getting online and just airing people out. Like, oh, I paid for your light bill. It's like, bro, come on, man. Relax, CIA. You disrespectful, bro. You talk to people crazy. You tell people that they are nothing. But then that says bad about you too, doesn't it? If Caribou is this turbo bitch, if Caribou is this turbo bitch, why did you sign her? Why did you co-sign her for so long? Why did you put your arm around her? Why did you allegedly have sex with her as well? Do you know what I mean? This is an awful person. That says you is, that's a bad indictment on you too. You're a bad judge of character, no? You tell people you're going to spit on them. You, you tell people they poor and you talk, to the, you talk to my fucking label crazy. You claim I was stealing money from you. Bro, stealing money from you how, nigga? Stealing money from you how, bro? You ain't made no money, bro. Fuck. Yeah. See, this is the problem with you new artists. Y'all fucking, y'all get popping online. Now he's trying to give people lessons. New artists. Look what you're doing to them. Look what you're doing to them. And then you become more popular than your actual music. Right? Yeah, big up Koyla. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I really hate it too. That's something that Yuri does. I hate calling girls bro. That's something that Yuri does. I'm not too sure if that's an LA thing, if that's a new generation thing, but bro, bro, bro like I'd rather you call a girl a bitch. I'm not gonna lie. Like I'd rather you say that than be calling a girl bro. Like I don't know how the girls let them get away with it personally. That's the one thing I'm not understanding. Is that there's no girl in my life that would let me spud them, right? No girl in my life would let me fucking spud them, let alone call them bro. So the guys that get away with it, bless you know, fair play to you. You nine hundred thousand dollars in a hole, and I got every fucking receipt. Nine hundred thousand in a, and he's exposed this to the world. He says Caribou is in debt for nine hundred thousand. Okay, nine hundred thousand dollars concrete in a hole. I got every fucking receipt, nigga, and I'ma post it. I dare you try me, try me. I'ma post it, nigga, and I post how much money your fucking streams are made. Why is he doing this, man? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? You got, bro, stop. Don't don't go on the internet and act like I'm bullying you, bro. I've been... Bro, this is bullying. This is bullying. Maybe you weren't doing it before, but you're doing it now. <laughs> you are bullying her now. <laughs> you can tell people I'm bullying you. I'm not bullying you. Bro, you are. You're doing it right now. <laughs> Nothing but loving and caring and paid your bills and gave you money. Gaslighting, bro. Gaslighting narcissism on fucking full front, full force. And, and, and took you around the world. And nobody would even know who the fuck Caribou was if it wasn't for me. 
that's what you're meant to do bro you're the label you're the star that's why you signed them that's why they signed to you that's why what why is this a diss what are we talking about bro bro what the fuck are we talking about bro, bro. i wrote that fucking verse when we went on on the radar by the way that really hurt my feelings i'm not gonna lie that on the radar freestyle that caribou on the radar freestyle was something serious caribou on the radar i'm pissed off that this beat or this freestyle wasn't written by her honestly i it breaks my heart that little yeti that, that, that little yeti wrote the whole thing this 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 one i'm sure you guys know it i'm pissed off this this is not written by caribou That hurt my feelings. I put you last on purpose. So everyone would say, who the fuck is that girl? I slowed the beat down. I put 808 specifically on your verse. So when it got to your part in the beat drop, everyone would be like, oh, the, the girl is the craziest one. That shows that you're a genius and you're really good at what you do. But why are you telling us this for? Why are you fucking revealing the magic? Why are you fucking showing us how the magic has been done? Or how the magic was done? Why? Why are you revealing this? We know you're a genius. Why are you now exposed? Like, why? Why are you doing this, Yeti, man? Why? Come on, brother. I wrote that verse then. The only reason why he's talking about her this mad is because they fucked. There's no way he can be this mad about it if they didn't fuck. You can tell this guy's really hurt. Night before we even went to On The Radar, on my phone, bro, I typed, I, I, I got the voice, I got the fucking reference. Playing, yeah, Big Up Quayla, you know, playing it off the phone like we're in the fucking internet cafe, bro. Like we're in the internet cafe, you know what I mean? We got the internet cafe gang. We got the one pound little code, you know? You get a little paper, enter the code into the computer. You go crazy with the porn. <laughs> Big up my internet cafe, man. <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? You ain't never, you ain't never wrote, no, no, a song in your life. That's. Oh, yeah, man. That's why ain't no music came out since you've been left. Cause you ain't got no music. Wow. So he's saying you wrote everything. <laughs> Holy shit. Cause you can't rap. What are we talking about? And I wasn't gonna say nothing. On my mother's life, I was gonna let you go live your life and go get a new writer and go get a stylist and go do you. I wasn't gonna speak on you, but you gonna go on the internet and say that I bully you? Kara, I've never bullied you. Just ignore it, brother. How can somebody say you bullied them and then now you wanna bait up their entire career? They just said that one thing as a throwaway thing. And now you want to bait up the entire career. It would be different if she came out and tried to, like, blame you for something or say something detailed. She said one thing. And now you want to kill her whole career. I let you live in my house for free. You lived in my house for free when you didn't have nowhere to live. Yeah, because you're probably fucking as well. <laughs> you got something out of it. She got something out of it. Let's not, let's not lie. Exactly, Z. She got him crying on the internet. She's that good. <laughs> exactly. Caribou must, Caribou must have that fire. <laughs> I let you live in my house. I let you live in my house for free. I let you live in my house for motherfucking free when you was disrespecting my home security and telling them that they that they beneath you and that they better shut the fuck up and watch this house because they work for you when they work for me. Same way you talk to people at the label, same way you talk to the torn person. Yo, big up, uh, big up, uh, Henry. Maybe we're experiencing a hookup with groupies recession. My favorite musicians in the past had it on a plate wherever they wanted. Now, due to me too, they have to take what they can get, like the rest of us, I guess you mean, right? So now he's butt her about one girl he fucked one time. Maybe. Or maybe it's just like control thing, man. It's just a control thing, isn't it? It's a control thing. Um, and I guess maybe it's also a part of it is like, because I heard, I heard ASAP Rocky talk about it a little bit with these kids, how he's going to try and raise them in Harlem and they're going to be amongst normal kids and shit. It must be really hard. It must be really hard. It must be really hard to to like struggle, get stuff out of the gutter, make it, and you're young, and then have other kids who are like the same age as you relying on you. It's almost like that Republican thing, isn't it? Where like the older you get, the more money you have, the more Republican you become, or the more conservative you become, sorry, and the more you start to like have animosity or negative feelings around like you know um benefits and like all that sort of shit because you think because you made it everyone else should be able to make it too 
So there's a weird resentment there. That's what that's what it kind of sounds like to me. It sounds like a, a, a an almost a resentment because Yoti's been through the hell and back. You know, Yoti hasn't had an easy career. He's had to he's had to basically reinvent himself several times in a very short space of time, but he's done it really successfully and he's killing it. So maybe in his head he's looking at people thinking, hold on, why are you relying? Why is your whole life dependent on me? I did it. Why can't you do it for yourself? You know, there's that bit of resentment there. And then when they act out, you start thinking like, what? You should be fucking honoured. Do you know what I mean? You start to have that sort of attitude, which obviously isn't healthy. The touring manager, which I have every receipt on how you talk to people in group messages. I don't give a fuck, bro. I, I, I got, I daily, I deleted Instagram and Twitter off my phone, bro. I ain't even on this shit. I, I've been asleep for 17 hours, bro. I went to sleep at 2 a.m. I woke up at 7 p.m. <laughs> What kind of flex is that? That sounds like you're depressed, brother. That sounds like a that sounds like depression. I went to sleep for 17 hours. Either you're depressed or you're extremely high. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you bragging about that? I deleted Instagram and took off my phone. I went to sleep for 17 hours. Like, yo. <laughs> Sick. Took a Xanax the size of my head. <laughs> throwing up, I'm throwing up right now. I swear to God, throwing up right now, bro. Fucked up. And you on here got me. She's, he's, oh, he said he's throwing up. He said he's throwing up right now. So he's ill. You fucked up, bro. Is he crying? You got me fucked up, bro. They couple hours before my birthday, bro. You got me fucked up, bro. I ain't never did nothing but be nice. Is he about to cry? I ain't never did nothing but be there. I ain't never did nothing but love you, bro. Your caribou might have that fire, man. He sounds like he's about to cry. Put you around every rapper, any rapper, bro. Who? I brought you on everybody from baby to Drake to bro. I put I get I I I put you on. Stop doing. Come on, bro. I'm completely sober, bro. Yeah, I got me fucked up, bro. And honestly, putting somebody on is part of the job. When you make it, that's part of the job. If you want friends, if you want company, if you want to be social, right? If you just don't want to enjoy the money on your own in the gold house, putting people on is part of the fun. Like I don't understand these people. Like. Who sort of like resent their friends because they put them on it's like that's what you're meant to do they're going to be there for you as friends you can put them on and let them help them actualize their dreams and they can help you how friends can help you whether it's talking to you honestly about your projects being there for you whatever that's what that's what it's about like why would that be an issue <laughs> come on bro we're not gonna we're not gonna act like it bro like like i'm crazy bro <laughs> He's in his villain arc, isn't it? Yeah, he's in his villain arc. Yeah, exactly. Big up, <laughs> big up, Koyla. Y'all made me mad in my birthday month, exactly. Yeah, he's in his villain arc, man. He's in his villain arc. Oh, crazy guy. I was, you was my best friend, bro. <laughs> now we get to the truth. You was my best friend. You was my best eater. <laughs> now we get to the truth, innit? You get to the truth. Hey, right, come on, bro. I made sure I gave you this career. What are we talking about? What the fuck are we talking about, bro? Now to this Mitch situation. Yeah, exactly Shades Cow. Exactly Shades Cow. He reminds me of that African girl with all the oils not wanting to give money back to her family. Yep, it reminds me hundred percent. And to be fair, I understand to a certain point. I understand because how old is how old is Yai? Yai's at twenty six, right? How old is he? Little Yai. He must be at twenty six. Twenty seven. <sighs> That's why they say it's hard to make it when you're famous and you're young. It must be difficult when you're that age to be a multi-millionaire and then have all your friends depend on you. It's hard for it not to get to your head. You're already a star anyway. You're already an artist. So artists already get indulged. They, you know, people kind of kiss the ground that they walk on. You know, it's a very weird world, that whole thing. Because I know it from DJing world. I know how DJs act like they're fucking, they walk on water or something. So I can only imagine what it's like for as an artist. It must be even worse. So it must be difficult to be somewhat level-headed and normal when you're that rich compared to all your friends and you're also super young. Like, and then all your friends depend on you. So you build up this weird resentment towards them because you feel like they're not working hard enough. I don't know, whatever. It's just, I understand why he's like this. I just don't think it's good. And I think it makes him look fucking crazy. Even if even if anything he's saying is true about Caribou being a bitch, about her being this, her being that, even if everything he's saying is true, he looks like a terrible leader, a terrible friend, a terrible business partner. Like he looks terrible all across the board. 
because he's letting one couple small interactions and clearly he's letting social media dictate how he acts about certain things but behind the scenes he also sounds like a cunt so he thinks he's surrounded by cunts but he also sounds like a cunt and as somebody said on social this is little yeah his third musical group he's been through f three groups of social he's been through three groups of friends at some point you have to look in the mirror and think to yourself maybe it's me if you have to keep reinventing yourself and keep reinventing new crews, new collectives to put money behind and to push and it doesn't work out, maybe you have to look at yourself a little bit. Maybe you're the problem. You're the common denominator. Maybe you're the problem. Maybe. Because Mitch got me fucked up. Y'all online talking about some little yachty bully uh, disrespecting his friend in front of Key Glock. I didn't even want to do a podcast, bro. But you were, though. This is the thing I don't like about Yeti. And I think he learned this maybe from Joe Budden. Maybe it's a narcissism. You have to acknowledge that that Key Glock clip was horrible. Maybe you could say it's taken out of context, but you have to acknowledge that. Yeah, that I know that Key Glock video looked crazy, but let me add some context. And then maybe you can describe, oh, you were having some argument with him during the week and it spilled over on the pod. Cool. But let's not start making excuses straight away and start deflecting. I didn't want to do a podcast. It's like, bro. Now he's going to try and say, oh, what? He did a podcast because of his friend. He went to give, put some money in his friend's pocket. That's what you're meant to do. I swear to God, I didn't want to do no podcast, bro. I didn't want to do no podcast, bro. I didn't, I didn't, that, I, bro. Mitch came to me like, bro. I need to do something in life. I need to do something in life. Nah, Yachty is the worst. Yachty is the worst. Yachty is the worst. He's the worst. He's the worst. You're going to air out your friend completely because the internet took was taking the piss out of you <clears throat> for like 24 hours. You're going to completely ruin your friendship with your friend because the internet was taking the piss out of you for 24 hours because of one 59 minute clip, 59 second clip. Help me out. I said, ah, right, you know what? I'm going to give you a platform. I'm going to find someone. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give you something to eat. <laughs> I mean, you're easy to cut. To sponsor us. And I'm going to give you a platform. We're going to make a podcast. And I'm going to show people how funny you are. I'm going to show people how crazy you are. I'm going to show people like how cool you are. And it's going to give you a platform. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want to do no motherfucking podcast, nigga. I'm a motherfucking rapper, nigga. Let's not act like that. Come on, let's relax. Let's relax. You did enjoy it too. Even though he brought the idea to you, you've enjoyed it. You get to sit at home, make some money with your friend, talk some shit with fellow artists. Then it went south for him because people started to like, you know, not like some of his opinions and shit. And then he got a bit sensitive and didn't like people, you know, talking back to him. But let's not act like you didn't enjoy it. Like, Let's not do that. Yeah, come on. You you did enjoy it. It looked like you enjoyed it. You were having fun. Come on. Got millions of dollars. I don't need to talk to other rappers. What the fuck are we talking about? I did the podcast for Mitch. Don't put goddamn three, 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 four hundred thousand dollars in Mitch's pocket. And y'all sitting here talking about some. He disrespecting his friend. So is he, is he saying because he put money in his friend's pocket, he can talk to him anyhow? Is that what he's saying? Because he put he could, because he gave his friends an opportunity. He can talk to his friends anyway. It almost sounds like he acts the same way that he's accusing Caribou of acting, isn't it? Hmm. And I got I'm I fuck fuck I ain't fucking with Mitch, bro. I talk You're not fucking with Mitch because of a clip. What did he do wrong in that clip anyway? <laughs> I I've been asleep all day, I wake up to this crazy shit. Mitch, how the I say, Mitch, how the fuck you didn't go on the internet and tell these folks that we playing, bro? That tweet got goddamn six million views on it. Why the fuck you ain't going there telling folks we playing? Man, it's Twitter, bro. You know how that is, bro. You know how Twitter is, bro. You know how Twitter is, bro. All right, fuck that then, nigga. Fuck the podcast, nigga. Fuck you. Fuck you, nigga. Fuck you and the podcast, nigga. How about that? I don't give a fuck about the podcast, nigga. Fuck the podcast, nigga. And every, and, like, what are we talking about, bro? All I do is help people, bro. I don't get nothing from none of this shit. I help people, bro. He helps people with loads of expectations, though. If he helps you, he expects you to fucking be on his beck and call. 
bend to his every need. Like his ex his help comes with a lot, a lot of conditions. All I do is try and help people, bro. The both of them. This care shit is so crazy to me, bro, because it's like, bro, care is not a good person. He's so he's upset the fans are missing caribou he's upset the fans are missing caribou from concrete boys he's like you don't know how she is behind the scenes she's a bitch and it's like yo why are you telling us this <laughs> you're the like let us just miss her let's let, let us just miss what we know of her you don't need to tell us how she's behind the scenes it's not necessary really <laughs> she's nasty she's like a very disrespectful rude egotistical person spider-man meme you're talking about somebody else being egotistical and rude spider-man meme i'm talking about bro she talked to people like they crazy bro like they nothing like they've been I, I i've been rich for nine years bro i ain't never talked to nobody like they beneath me what we just saw you do it on camera to your friend <laughs> I can only imagine what you like behind the scenes. We just saw you do it to your friend on camera. That's why you're mad. I've been rich for nine years. I ain't done. Come on, man. I was raised with respect by my parents, bro. I don't talk to people like they, like they, I don't, this money shit ain't nothing. I, I... It is something though, because you're holding over people's heads. Because I don't think Yeti would act like this if he wasn't rich. So let's not act like it's not nothing. You got money and it turned you into an animal. I don't ever treat nobody like they less than me. Everyone is equal, bro. Like, I swear to God, bro. I, and I write my own raps, nigga. I write a whole lot of people raps, nigga. What are we talking about, bro? I don't, I don't, I don't, I, don't. I, I ain't never, mm. I ain't never act like somebody was better than me. Ever. I ain't better than nobody, nigga. I'm a regular ass nigga, bro. For real. I'm a regular ass nigga and I'm outside. And if any nigga ever was confused or wanted to touch me, nigga, I'm outside. I'm in New York right now. I'm a regular person, but I talk to anybody. I take pictures with anybody. I ain't never shit shit on nobody. What are we talking about, bro? Like, you ain't a good person. And your career would not... It, it, sooner or later, it would have came out that you a terrible person and you shit on people and you treat people like they nothing. And your career would have been done, nigga. I mean, shit, it's gone. It, it, it's been done, nigga, because you don't write. So, like, nigga, it ain't nothing to it. I, ne I don't ever understand, like, you give somebody a career and then they start to think, like, they really start to think they that person. That's what they're meant to do. You give them a career, though. What? You give them a career, then they start to believe that they're that person. That's what they're meant to do. You give them the career. <laughs> How are you going to guess like me for you doing your job and me doing my job? <laughs> what? <laughs> you got me fucked up, bro. How dare you? How dare you? Are you 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 dishonest. Anyway, you get the point. That's basically it. Yeah, you going off on his friends, and um, yeah, man, disappointing, disappointing to see. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm just curious to know what has he learned from Drake, because according to a lot of people, everybody that's hanged out with Drake personally has always said how nice he is in person, and besides this beef with Kendrick. There's never really been any leaks from Drake's camp to suggest that he's a cunt behind the scenes to his friends. And he has a big social group of friends, a big social circle of friends. Yeah, he's also tight with Drake. So I wonder why people like Yoti are not able, and I think it sends a bit to Brendan. Why don't people like that learn from people like that? Like, learn how Drake acts with his friends. He's the main star there. He's the fucking multi-billionaire guy. But he treats his friends with respect. They all seem to have a place in his life. They don't seem to have any issues with money and getting called out with all this my lover. He, and especially if you watch the hundred, um, the hundred gigs video, what you see from behind the scenes is that they all like hanging out with each other, right? There's a lot of like, you know, for lack of a better term, community and whatever good vibes amongst his social group. They all kind of in their, in their own way help him make his records, and he's very thankful for them being in his life. So I wonder why he doesn't learn from that. He learns everything else, but he forgets that bit of how Drake treats his friends. I wonder why. It almost makes me wonder about Brendan. Brendan, like, you're good friends with Rogan, but then you don't, you know, you don't treat people the way Rogan seems to treat people, which means with some level of respect. Hmm. Either way, that's what happened. Um, 
sad to see to be fair because I'm a big fan of Yachty and it's sad to see that he had let social media once again dictate his relationships and his friendships and get him to act away but it also revealed that behind the scenes he's a bit of a shitty dude he's a bit of a shitty dude um and it maybe is a explanation as to why he's had so many different crews and he's been trying to make different collectives pop um maybe those guys were the issues in their own way but also he seems to be the common denominator he seems to be the common denominator in a lot of these situations and it seems like he's not able to uh, make it work and maybe just to kind of resolve the situations similar to like adam 22 at no jumper similar to like joe budden at his podcast network maybe a lot of these guys should just like think about instead of trying to be the mogul and the head guy with money just take that responsibility and give it to somebody give make them that that their job like joe budden clearly isn't a good manager i don't think or leader of people neither is adam 22 maybe because they, they lack ability to kind of communicate and shit who knows but why is it so hard for those guys just to go and hire a label manager a podcast manager a channel manager somebody that just deals with the humans in that building and shit so that you can be the talent and you can be the figurehead but somebody's actually dealing with the business day to day because i think that would remove a lot of these issues honestly because i think it's difficult when you're the talent and you're the money and you're the ceo and you're the fact you're all these things you're not really good at it anyway but you're just you're just doing them because you've got the money whereas if you give somebody that is actually their job that kind of alleviates that kind of thing for me that responsibility and it kind of allows you to be the artist and it allows the business to be good that should be the way to go about things maybe but again what do i know